Good morning, good morning, everyone. Let's all stand up for worship. So good to be in the house of the Lord. How are you all doing this morning? Good, good. Can we say that again? How are you guys doing this morning? Awesome. I'm so glad to be here to worship the Lord on this beautiful Sunday. It's perfect for people next to see it. Good morning, brother and sister. Nice to be in the house of the Lord with you. I say hi to those online as well. Hello, everyone who is online. We welcome you to worship with me this morning.
What did he do to love for us on the cross? When he died for us, when he shed your blood for us, God, we didn't deserve it. While we were still sinners, he died for us. How great is your unfailing love for us, Lord. We praise you. We adore you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us, for all that you you are. Lord, we give you the highest praise. And Lord, we declare worthy, worthy is your name. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, Lord. Lord, we should open up our eyes right here, right now. Your worthiness. How worthy you are, King Jesus. And God, may we offer you the praise that you deserve. You are just so worthy, Lord. We stand in awe before you as we worship you. Lord, he is Thank you, Jesus. So we get you going.
like to introduce our speaker, Pastor Chris. He is from Bread of Life Christian Church. Um, really excited for his topic. Um, all speakers' topics are important, but I feel like this is super important. So I hope we can all listen and take in um, from what he has to share with us today. And also, towards the end, um, he's going to invite us to do something that we don't usually do. But um, my advice to you is to take the opportunity, even if you're unsure and you're uncertain. So yeah, let us welcome up Pastor Chris now.
He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day that we get to celebrate the Holy Spirit given to us to be with us forever. Jesus, we glorify your name. We pray that you'll reveal to us who the Holy Spirit is. And may every single person here today may experience the presence of your Spirit, your tangible presence here. We pray that every heart will be open to your word and receive this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, um, someone did um, some math and they figured that if Jesus could physically minister 14 hours a day, so from 8 a.m. 8 to 10 p.m., if Jesus could minister 14 hours a day, well, that's a, that's a long day, right? That's a long work day. And he would give everyone 60 seconds to talk to him. So every person, you would have 60 seconds to talk to him. That's not long, right? We have so many questions to ask him. But if he uh, could get everyone 60 seconds a day, he would be able to minister to 840 people every day. And for him to see 1 million people, it would take him three years. And for him to see 7 billion people in the world, everyone can only have one minute. It would take him 2 million years. Wow. That's long, right? So, um, this is why when Jesus came, he only spent three and a half years with a group of people, a certain group of people. He did not, he did not meet everyone in the world. He ministered only to a certain group of people at a certain location, which is Israel, Israel right? Um, we know that he ministered to the people of Israel. And he did a lot of things. He did miracles, healings, and uh, he preached the gospel. And um, But more specifically, he spent most of his time with his 12 disciples. So um, many of us would think that, oh, that's like disciples, they, they have a better advantage, right? Because they get to hang out with Jesus. Most of them have, like, we saw, like, most of, most of you like hang out with Jesus. But um, you would think that disciples, they had a better advantage. And maybe disciples, they were pretty powerful, right? And they would um, understand the Bible pretty well. But, you know, actually, it's quite the opposite. Um, most of them, most of the disciples, when they were with Jesus, they were quite confused. Most of the time. And until, like, almost till the end, they still, like, didn't figure out who Jesus was. And they were pretty weak. And they were quite afraid. In fact, when Jesus was arrested, most of us ran away. Right? So you think, wow, these disciples, they were with Jesus, the Son of God, God himself. But they were not powerful Christians. This is why Jesus told them that I have to send another one. Not just to be with you, but be in you so that he can change your life. So this is why before Jesus went on to the cross, before um, his trials, he introduced the Holy Spirit to these disciples. And it was, um, most of us know that it was during the Last Supper, and he, he, he told the disciples um, that he's sending someone, he's, he's, he tells them that he's leaving um, in a while. So the disciples were, were, were really shocked. They were like, why are you leaving? Where are you going? And Jesus says that the, the place I'm going to, you cannot go now. And so the disciples, they're so confused. But Jesus introduced to them the Holy Spirit. And so this is what he said. He said, I will ask the Father. So before this, he told them that he's leaving. And the disciples were, were, were quite, quite confused and afraid. And, and Jesus said, I will ask the Father. And he will give you another advocate. Everybody say, another advocate. <laughs> who will never leave you. Everybody say, never leave you. So Jesus is leaving, and he said he's sending someone else that is never leaving you, that will never leave you. And he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it is isn't looking for him and it doesn't recognize him. But you know him. Disciples are more confused now. You just introduced the Holy Spirit to me, and you said, you know him. And he said, because he lives with you, and later will be in you. 
Wow. And Jesus said something more extraordinary. He said, in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Everybody say, it is best. It is best. He said, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. So, why is that it is best for Jesus to go away? Isn't it good for him to just be with disciples wherever? Most of us would, would think that we would like to meet Jesus in person. Why is he going away and sending someone else? So before um, I want to introduce the Holy Spirit, I wanted to um, clarify some things because the Holy Spirit, I think he is the most important person in the world, but he is also the most misunderstood person. A lot of churches misunderstood the Holy Spirit and they're afraid to welcome the Holy Spirit. And I just wanted to clarify some things that the Holy Spirit is not. The Holy Spirit is not just a bowl of power. He's not just a, a force. He is not electric current, yet he is powerful. The Holy Spirit is not an emotion. Yet he comforts us and gives us peace. The Holy Spirit is not just a thought, yet he leads us into all truth. He is not just an atmosphere, yet his presence changes everything. And the Holy Spirit is not a dove, but he is gentle and sensitive like a dove. So who is the Holy Spirit? The first thing you need to know is that the Holy Spirit is a person. Everybody say a person. What does it mean that he is a person? You are a person. You are a person. A dog is not a person. An anime character is not a person. It's a fake person. It's a fake character. But the Holy Spirit is a person. Because the Bible tells us that He is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is referred to as He, not a what or an it. And you see, what does it mean that the Holy Spirit is a person? It means that you can have a personal relationship with Him. It means that you can talk to Him. It means that He has feelings. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, um, in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14, it says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Fellowship means that you can have a personal relationship. You can hang out with Him. Just like the disciples hang out with Jesus. You can now hang out with Jesus, the Spirit, with the Spirit of Jesus. You can have a fellowship with Him. So how do we know that, that the Holy Spirit is a person? Because the Bible shows us that the Holy Spirit speaks to people. He has a will, and he has emotions. You see, in Acts, verse, um, Acts 8, verse 29, says the Holy Spirit said to Philip, he talks to people. He said, go over and walk along beside the carriage. Okay, so the Holy Spirit speaks to you and tells you, and gives you advice. The Holy Spirit has a will. First Corinthians 12, verse 11 said, But one and the same Spirit works all things, distributing to each other individually as He wills. So He has a will. He has a plan for your life. The Holy Spirit also has feelings and emotions. Um, Ephesians 4, verse 30 says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You know, when I realized this revelation, you know, I, I've been taught about the Holy Spirit for a long time, but when I realized when this revelation that the Holy Spirit is a person came to me, it changed my life. Because I know that everything I do affects Him when He's in me. Whatever I do, the Holy Spirit feels about it. The, the Holy Spirit has something to say about it. You can't grieve the Holy Spirit. You can also make Him happy. Everything you say, everything you do, every step of your life, the Holy Spirit is with you. Not just with you, but in you. So this is the very first thing that you need to know, that He is a person. He's not an it. He's not a force. He's not a dove. He's not an atmosphere. Number two, the Holy Spirit is God. Everybody say, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God. 
So this is, I think, we would welcome God in this place, right? Because we worship God here. But you see, a lot of people don't welcome the Holy Spirit. They're afraid of the Holy Spirit. And But the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is God. In Matthew 28, verse 19, it says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, Father, Father Son, Son, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So this is a concept that um, we as humans are, um, Trinity is a, a doctrine that is really hard to grasp because it's beyond our um, logical processes, beyond our um, human thinking. And, but you have to know something, that the Holy Spirit is God. He is not lesser, but equally divine as the Father and the Son. That means that, you know, we worship God, right? We worship the Father, and we worship Jesus. You see, we, in, our, in our worship, we praise Jesus, we worship Jesus. But can we worship the Holy Spirit? Can we? If he's God, can we worship him? Yes. If he's God, then we should worship him, right? The Holy Spirit is God. You see, as Christians, we believe in a God that is three in one. Everybody say three in one. What does three in one mean? So, you know, in other religions, they're, they're, they're quite confused. They say, you say you have one God, but how can you worship God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit? You see, um, three in one, the Trinity, the doctrine of Trinity, it's it's beyond uh, our human thinking. It's beyond our limitations. But three in one, meaning three in person and one in being. Okay? Three in person and one in being. So uh, let me explain this to you. It's a, it's a little bit hard to grasp, but I, I think most of you could um, uh, kind of get the concept. So being describes what you are. Everybody say what you are. B describes what you are. So you are a human being, right? God is a being, okay? So being describes what you are. The person describes who you are. You are Joshua. You are Andrew. You are Caleb. So, but a human being, we are one person and one being, right? But interestingly, God is three persons and one being. And I think it's a mystery for us humans because it's, um, it's I, I said it's beyond our understanding. But you see, Trinity says, within the nature of one God, there are three eternal persons. And this is what God showed us that who he is. And um, how do we know? In the Bible, from cover to back, the Holy Spirit you can see the evidence of the Holy Spirit. You can see God in three persons. If you open the Bible to the very first book in Genesis 1, verse 1. Uh, how many of you have read this verse? If you have read the Bible, I think most of you would, you know, turn to the first page. And it said that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So you ask, so where is the Trinity? If you look at the original language in Greek, it says God created the heavens and the earth. It uses a plural form for God, which is Elohim. Oh, I think you can't see it. But God is actually in the plural form. Do you guys know what plural means? It means like multiple. God is mentioned in the plural form. And then created, the word created is, is used in a singular form. It's a singular verb. And this is something that, um, that is against grammar, right? Because it usually it's a singular noun and a singular verb. But in the Bible, the very first verse, it's, uh, it has a wrong grammar. It says God, in plural form, created, singular form. It shows us that God exists in both plural and singular. And you move on to the second verse. Genesis 1 verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So you see, this is talking about creation, right? But before creation, the Spirit of God was hovering 
over the face of the waters, meaning that the Spirit of God is not created. When I say that the Spirit of God is not created, it means that He is the Creator. The Spirit of God exists before creation. And if you read to verse 26, it says, God says, so this is interesting, let us make men in our image according to our likeness. Wow. God is not saying let I. He, say, he says let us, plural, make man in our image according to our likeness. Showing us that God is talking to us, mentioning three persons of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So what is the difference between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Um, they have different functions. Because they don't just have different name, names, but different functions. The Father is the creator of the, the universe. He is the originator. He created the world. And the Son, Jesus, He is the mediator for the human race. He came and revealed the Father to us. Showed us, showed us who the Father is. And He died on the cross. He rose three days later. The Holy Spirit is the administrator of God's revelation in grace. Think about, it's like God playing tag with each other. You know, it's like the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are playing tag. God created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested and said, and my work is done. And then later, he said, Jesus, you're it. So Jesus came to the world, and then did miracles, spent time with the disciples, and died on the cross, and then he ascended to heaven, and then he goes to the Holy Spirit and says, Holy Spirit, you're it. Now it's your turn. So from 2,000 years ago to now, who is the one that is active on earth today? Everybody say, the Holy Spirit. Now the, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is actually the person of God who is active on earth today. Wow. But a lot of people didn't welcome him. It's just like Jesus. When Jesus came to the earth, you know, most people didn't welcome him, right? Most people in the church, the religious people, didn't welcome him. They don't, they didn't recognize him. And it's the same today. It's sad that even a lot of religious people, a lot of Christians, a lot of churches, they're afraid of the Holy Spirit. Thinking that, oh, if we welcome the Holy Spirit, it's something weird is going to happen. People are going to speak in other tongues. People are going to fall to the ground. There are going to be weird things happening. You know, in fact, I don't know how many of you are, have heard of tongues. Have you heard of tongues? Tongues means um, it's like another language, a heavenly language. Or, you know, when the, the disciples, they receive the Spirit, they receive the Holy Spirit, they spoke in a different language. And a lot of people came to Jerusalem and they hear their own um, mother tongue. And they were so shocked. How do these Jews know my language? In fact, I don't know if you can tell, English is not my first language. I'm actually speaking in tongues right now uh, because I, I didn't grow up speaking English. Um, I was born and raised in Taiwan till uh, college. So I was 19 and I came to uh, the US a couple years ago and not no, not being fluent in English, but I don't know if you can tell if I have an accent, but I think that the Holy Spirit is the one that enables me to speak His word. And the Holy Spirit enables you to do what God calls you to do. That is why Jesus said, He is our advocate. You know, in another um, version, um, number three, I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit is our helper. In the New King James Version uh, of John 14, 16, um, the same passage that we read, uh, Jesus said that I will pray to the Father and he will give you another helper. And you want to say another helper. another helper. That he may abide with you forever. So the Holy Spirit came to be our helper. And so the word helper, um, it's translated to different words, but the, the, the main theme is helper. And this word is actually a pretty big word. Um, it can be translated to, uh, so 
we just read that uh, some, some, some versions translate advocate, right? So what does advocate mean? Advocate means um, someone who is your speaker, someone who speaks for you. So um, in the Bible, people use this word, as, uh, it's the same as lawyer. So a lawyer, what does a lawyer do? It speaks for, speaks on your behalf, right? So always speaks for you. And it's also translated as comforter, which gives you peace. And also counselor, the Holy Spirit teaches and guides you. Uh, help can also be translated as mediator, one between you and the Father, and intercessor, prays for you and helps you pray. So the Holy Spirit is your helper. He enables you to do everything that God wants to do through your life. I believe every single one of you is chosen by God. To reveal his glory to this world. And without the Holy Spirit, you will not be able to do what God has called you to do. Just like the disciples. You see, before they received the Holy Spirit, even though they were with Jesus for three and a half years, they were still weak. When Jesus was arrested, Peter denied him three times. He didn't have the power, he didn't have the courage to admit that he is one of Jesus' disciples. But you see, when Peter, after 50 days, after 50 days, 50 days after Jesus ascended to heaven, Peter received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which enabled him to preach the gospel. He didn't have any education. He only spent three and a half years with Jesus. But when the Holy Spirit came, he preached the gospel. And 3,000 men were baptized. Can you imagine that? What kind of sermon is it? You know, all of us can, can read the sermon and ask up to you can memorize the sermon. But it is the power of the Holy Spirit that brought people to Christ, that brought people to, to the revelation of Christ, that brought people to know Christ. It's not words. Paul says that I'm preaching not just with human wisdom, but with the power of the Holy Spirit. This is why every one of us, we need the filling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God active on earth. He is the person of God who is active on earth. You know, in Acts verse 1, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, this is right before Jesus ascended to heaven. And he told disciples, I'm leaving. But when, but you shall receive power. Everybody say power. Power. You shall receive power. In original Greek, it's the word dunamis. Dunamis. That's how we got the word dynamite from. It means explosive power. When you receive dunamis, this explosive power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The Holy Spirit is Jesus unlimited. He is the person of God who is now living in you, enabled you to do all things that God has called you to do. I want to end with this story. There was a poor man and whose lifelong dream is to go on a week-long cruise. So how, how many of you have, have, have gone on a cruise before? Is it good? It's nice, huh? No? Not really? <laughs> okay, I, I've never been on a cruise. Um, so this man, he saved every penny. Every extra penny he, he could. He worked very hard, and um, he bought a ticket so that he could buy a ticket to board the cruise ship. And uh, because he spent most of his um, um, savings, he assumed that he wouldn't have um, extra money to buy the expensive food on the cruise and to, to go to restaurants on the cruise. And so he, um, he bought uh, a, a, a suitcase and filled the suitcase with peanut butter sandwiches because that's all he could afford. And so he went on the cruise and that's what his lifelong dream. Every day he would enjoy the views, he would enjoy the sea air, he would enjoy the sunlight. And, um, but it, when it was uh, mealtime, he just would just go to the corner and eat his peanut butter sandwiches. 
and you will see other passengers um, uh, go to the uh, the restaurants, buy the food over there, and, and eat the food over there. And he could, you know, when he was eating his peanut butter sandwich, he could, he could smell the luxurious food being served at the dining area. And he would hear other passengers talking about how delicious the food was and complaining about how cold they were. And so on the last day of the trip, the man couldn't resist himself. He walked to one of the waiters and asked, hey, um, I've just been hearing about how great the food is on this cruise, and I thought I couldn't afford it, but um, I, I'd like to know how much would I have to pay for one of these meals? The waiter looked at him in confusion and said, Sir, didn't you buy a ticket? He said, Yes, I did. Well, sir, I'm sorry that you didn't know, but all the meals are included in the ticket. All the food has already been paid for. Wow. You see, wouldn't it be sad if this true story turns out to be our life story? That Jesus paid it all. He came and died for us. He sent us to heaven. And he sent us this great gift, the Spirit of Jesus. Himself. Not in human form, but in spirit form. And he promised that everyone would be able to receive this gift. It's already been paid for. You just have to ask. Right? Just like the man he asked the waiter. He would have, you know, if he asked on the first day, he would have he would be able to enjoy all the food. But he asked on, asked on the last day. This is why I'm passionate to preach about the Holy Spirit. Because he is Jesus Unlimited. And it would be sad if we live our lives not knowing that the Holy Spirit has all the power we need, all the words that we need, all the courage that we need to preach the gospel. So, um, I feel like um, I'll show you how we play some background music. I want you to want you guys to close your eyes. And let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Jesus is actually here today. The Spirit of Jesus is here today in our midst. The Holy Spirit is a person that we can relate to, we can talk to, we can spend time with every day of our lives, every hour, every minute, every second, every millisecond. And He's here with us. So I just want you to say in your heart, say, Holy Spirit, I welcome you. We welcome you in this place. Show us your presence. To touch your lives. You see, I grew up in the church, like many of you. Been a Christian for a long time. But it wasn't until that I experienced the power of the Holy Spirit that I really get to know Jesus, not just from sermons, not just from messages, but from the Spirit of God Himself. The Holy Spirit is the one that will reveal Jesus to you. What we need is not information, but revelation. Revelation that will change your life. You see, some of us grew up in the church. Some of us, some of us were Christians all of our all our lives, but there are still sins that we cannot overcome. Some of us have been in the church, grew up in the church all our lives, but we feel like we still still don't know God. We feel like we never really knew God, and we're still confused like the disciples. 
But you see, when Jesus left, he said, I will not abandon you as orphans, but I will come to you. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I will live in you. And since I live, you also will live.
that you want to receive the filling of the Holy Spirit, you boldly raise your hand and say, Lord, I want your Spirit to fill me. I want your Spirit to fill me. Be the Spirit of Jesus that will enable you to do what God has called you to do. Just lift up your hands and say, Lord, I welcome you. Spirit of God, fill me with your presence.
is a real glory and fun. We continue to invest in his presence. I want to invite uh, Joshua and Caleb to present us the spirit of fun. Just lift up your hands. So last week I was praying and I just shared with you with Joshua. While I was praying for the scripture, the Lord showed, showed me. He said, I, you need to pray for Joshua and Caleb. So I didn't know that Joshua had a brother named Caleb. And I only knew Joshua. But the Lord said, pray for Joshua and Caleb. Because he has called, he has called them to be brothers. The call of God in your lives are tremendous. Not this pipeline. I believe that God has not just called your father, your mother, but he's also called both of you. Yeah. 
that you've chosen us to be your representative, to preach the good news to the poor, to release the one in bondage, to heal the sick, to proclaim freedom. those that are in distress. Father, I just pray that every single of us today continue to experience the presence of your Holy Spirit. From this day on, your lives will never be the same. And I see that these are the people of God that seek your face, that desire your presence. Holy Spirit, you've told us that you will never leave us. Every single one of us that receive your spirit will be able to have a personal relationship to walk with you every day of our life. We thank you for today. We thank you that you called Joshua and Caleb. To host your presence wherever they go, to bring the presence of God, the message of God, wherever they go. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. May you see it. Thank you guys. 